Is It Because I'm Black? by Syl Johnson. Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. President Barack Obama is heading to Cushing, Oklahoma today to announce his support for TransCanada to build the southern leg of its Keystone oil pipeline from Oklahoma to Texas. The move comes two months after Obama rejected the Canada to Texas Keystone XL pipeline after large protests by environmental groups. Obama's speech promoting the pipeline comes at a time when much of the nation is experiencing a heat wave that some scientists and meteorologists have linked to climate change. Spring only began on Tuesday, but it has felt like summer this week throughout much of the Northeast, Midwest and parts of Canada. In Chicago, the temperature soared to 87 degrees Fahrenheit on Wednesday, marking the city's eighth consecutive day of record warmth. Record temperatures have been recorded in Detroit, Cleveland, Indianapolis and Buffalo and many other cities and towns. 36 states have set daily high temperature records last Thursday. Meanwhile, the National Weather Service issued flood warnings Wednesday for eastern Oklahoma, much of Arkansas, parts of western Missouri, southeast Louisiana, and coastal Mississippi due to a storm that has already dumped heavy rain on Texas. The National Weather Service is reporting Washington, D.C., just experienced its warmest winter on record. The capital's famed cherry blossoms opened two weeks early. New York City had its second mildest winter. At the same time, nearly 11 feet of snow fell this winter in Anchorage, Alaska, near record. To talk more about the pipeline and extreme weather. We're joined by Bill McKibben, founder of the Grassroots Climate Campaign, 350.org, scholar in residence at Middlebury College, also the author of many books, including Earth, Making a Life on a Tough New Planet. Uh, Bill McKibben, you've been writing about, organizing around President Obama going to Oklahoma. You were one of those who was arrested outside the White House this past summer to call for the Keystone XL pipeline to be canceled. President Obama made a major announcement that you all considered a great victory, which was a moratorium on the Keystone XL. So what's happening in Oklahoma today? Well, he is, as he said he would do uh, some, uh, some weeks ago, he's going there to praise the southern portion of this, from Oklahoma down to Texas, the kind of bottom of the pipeline. Now, it doesn't bring new tar sands oil in from Canada. There's no connection across the border. And the White House reiterated last night that any, if that's ever going to happen, it's going to have to undergo a huge, big environmental review and no time soon and so on. Still, it's um, unsettling at best to see the president standing there in Cushing in a uh, uh, yard full of pipe uh, uh, talking about how much he loves pipelines in the state that had the warmest summer ever recorded for an American state last summer. And in a week, when we've seen the weirdest weather uh, that, uh, well, meteorologists have almost ever seen in this country, uh, you know, uh, it's it, it's hard. It's almost sort of hard to uh, figure out a kind of better setting to describe the depths of our addiction to oil than to have a progressive president uh, uh, in that kind of in this kind of weather still out there saying we got to build more pipelines. But, Bill, isn't the president, in, in one sense, sort of trying to have it both ways? On the one hand, saying that there's got to be—it's uh, undecided what's going to happen with the, with, the, with the entire line, yet giving the go-ahead to build a portion of it? I mean, obviously, yeah. uh, uh, that's ominous in terms of what might happen after the election. Well, the portion, the portion from Oklahoma down to Texas can be used and will be used for lots of things. There's a glut of oil— Sitting there, one of the one of the ironies of this is that it may actually raise gas prices in the Midwest because that glut of oil has been keeping prices down. Um, but yeah, it's it's plenty ominous, and you know, there's no great mystery as to why it's ominous. The American Petroleum Institute said uh, before he vetoed the the northern part of the pipeline, they said, "Do this, and there'll be huge political consequences." Those guys have the resources to do that. They're running endless ad campaigns erroneously linking the president to the price of gas and things. Um, and and so I assume that this is an effort to kind of uh, uh, play defense against that a little bit. Um, it's 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 tough to watch. President Obama calls it his above. Uh, what does he call it? His all, um, of, the all of the above policy. That's what he calls his energy policy. What he's saying is that he, any energy source, domestic energy source, is good. Oil, coal, solar, wind, whatever else. 
It's not, I, I mean, I think it's not an intellectually very useful uh, idea. I mean, if I told you that I was running for president and I had an all of the above foreign policy where uh, all of our, uh, every country in the world was going to be considered an equal ally of ours, uh, you might think I was a bit of a lightweight. But with energy, unfortunately, it remains politic to insist that we're never going to have to make any choices. Uh, the weather this week, I think, is demonstrating that we better start making some choices. The temperature uh, across America in March, as we come out of winter, the temperature is its not just off the charts. It's off the wall that the charts are tacked to. Um, President Obama is going to be protested by Native Americans. Um, one of the people who is decrying uh, what he's saying is Marty Kobanes of the Indigenous Environmental Network, who says President Obama is an adopted member of the Crow tribe, so is fast-tracking a project that will desecrate known sacred sites and artifacts is a real betrayal and disappointment for his Native relatives everywhere. Final comments. We just have 15 yeah. seconds. The Indigenous Environmental Network is doing a great job there in Oklahoma, and as the president moves on, to Ohio, there'll be investors there too later in the day. Um, uh, you know, environmentalists never win permanent victories. That's the thing. I guess we got to keep this fight, as with many others, going strong. Bill McKibben, thanks for being with us, founder of the Grassroots Climate Campaign 350.org, speaking to us from Middlebury College in Vermont. And that does it for the broadcast. I'll be speaking in Minneapolis on Friday and at St. Scholastica College in Duluth, Minnesota, on Saturday. You can check our website at democracynow.org. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Renee Feltzer, and Mate Nirmin Sheikh, Steve Martinez, and Sam Alcoff, Hani Masood, Ravi Karan, Dina Guzder, Chantal Berman, Mansi Kang, Amy Littlefield, Mike Topopo, Miguel Nagara, Engineer. Special thanks to Becca Staley, Julie Crosby. Again, happy birthday to Miriam Barnard. I'm